Hello and welcome to another episode of Test Speak special feature and I'm your host Brijesh Dev. Well, uh, I have been talking to a lot of people and uh, today with me is a teacher whose cool demeanor and expression has uh, gone a long way in making me understand a lot of concepts. He focuses on the basics, he goes step by step and he explains things so beautifully. Completing the trilogy of Nagin Mukesh and Raghav Today I have Raghav Pal with me. Welcome Raghav. Hey Brijesh, how are you? I am doing very well Raghav, thank you so much. How are you? I am doing good. It's uh, so good to be here and uh, so good to meet you. Well, it's, it's, it's an honor for me because uh, as I said in my introduction that you know, uh, uh, for me, Naveen, Mukesh, and you are a trilogy. Okay, uh, uh, as as I like to refer as Tridev. Okay, so you guys have been my teachers for a long time, have taught me a lot, and have taught many of us a lot of things. And uh, and you know, uh, when I was talking to Naveen first, uh, he he made a reference to Mukesh and you. Then I was talking to Mukesh, he made a reference to Naveen and you. And then I got to see a live session of with all the three of you together on Mokesh's channel, and I was like, "Wow!" So this this is a must-do interview for me. And uh, then my chase began, and then finally I I have your time now. So thank you so much, uh, Raghav, uh, for your time. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started with the questions that I have for you. So um, okay. so Raghav, uh, please tell us something about. How you got started with this entire automation journey, and then how did the idea of YouTube and things come about? Uh, so how did that happen? Okay, so uh, you know, um, uh, right after my college, um, I I was supposed to join Infosys, uh, and I I was placed in Infosys when I was in my college, so I was supposed to join that. But uh, that was a recession time, if you remember, you know. Uh, back then when there was you know a huge recession period uh, so i did not get my uh, call for infosys just after i completed my college so and and i, I had to work so I, I joined a call center and i worked there for a temporary period and then finally after a few months i got the call from infosys so i went there and uh, there i i had my training and then finally i was uh, posted into production so I, I was into a testing team. So there is a you know a separate unit in Infosys called validation and verification. So I was into that, and we were doing all the testing and uh, you know validation things. Uh, after some time, I was uh, you know posted to a different location, and there was when I first got into an automation team. So until then, I did not know what is you know test automation or a, a lot about that. So that was the time when I first started with automation, but that was in a very limited way. It was a team who was, uh, you know, running automation and just reporting the the results and the bugs and all those things. So it was not like you know creating frameworks and doing the actual you know the the things of developing automation frameworks and tools and scripts and all those things. It was just like uh, somebody has already created a framework and it was being used we ha we had a task to run automation on a daily basis and then um, report all the results and all the findings so that was you know how it started uh, then there came a time when uh, the application changed and there was a need to uh, update the framework and we as a team uh, you know it was asked that who can you know take up the challenge of updating the framework and going inside and enhancing the, it and you know everybody said no because you know everyone was comfortable in just you know doing the regular things running automation and then you know reporting and all those regular things uh, it was then when i took up this challenge i just you know told myself that the the maximum it could happen is that i will fail which is okay but let me just try it out and i i took that up i uh, you know started looking into the framework and you, uh, you know I, I can tell you Brijesh that it is so easy to create a framework but if somebody has created a framework and you want to go inside and figure out things yourself it is so difficult and yes. it was such a complex framework and you know 
I started looking into it. I you know, started diving into it. Uh, I started to look at each and every connection where this uh, function is being called from, where is, this, where is this class being called from, where are the properties file, where are the configurations and all those things. And slowly and gradually I started, you know, making all the connections and understanding things. And then finally I was able to do some uh, small enhancements in the framework which could actually work and get the things done. So I, I kept on doing that whenever there was a new enhancement or a new change required. I would be the person who would do that and very soon I became the go to guy for any framework enhancements and any any changes on the technical side of the you know automation frameworks and scripting. So uh, that is how I started and then um, after some time I switched to a different organization and it was kind of a startup. They were like hardly 15 20 people when I joined that place and that was I believe the actual experience that I got because you know it was like uh, when you are in big organizations you understand and learn the processes very well but then yeah. you have a limited window that you know you have to only do this particular thing and the rest of the things will be taken care of by other teams and other people but this was a place where we had like 15 20 people few of them were developers few of them were testers few of them were the admin guys the the network guys the you know uh, operations team and everyone used to sit on the in the same room we all used to sit in the same room so it gave me a lot of exposure and uh, for the first time i could look at things from a uh, you know total different perspective i could see the complete end to end workflow how things start and how things end and i was the only person who was responsible for automation that time and you know at that place it was again a, a huge challenge because I was the only person who was responsible for creating automation frameworks, uh, you know, setting up all the environment, all the infrastructure required, running automation, uh, uh, seeing what are the defects and then reporting and then doing all the enhancements. I was the only person and then I grew up my team there. So I, I learned a lot of things there and I think that is uh, where I also, uh, you know, developed this passion of teaching because I, I was the only person who started and then whenever a new person joined the team I was responsible for teaching him or her and you know making uh, taking care of everything right from the scratch so I think that was one of the uh, you know the first experiences that I had and I I had this uh, I developed this interest and passion for teaching uh, the other thing was you know while I was working here uh, because I was working on completely new thing which I have never worked before and I was the only person who was taking care of automation completely end to end. I had to take a lot of help from internet and online resources. So every time I, I have to do anything new I would go online and I will see uh, I will look for different resources. I will read things uh, see YouTube videos and a lot of other resources and that helped me a lot. I was able to complete all my tasks and you know everything that I all the challenges I had I was able to overcome that taking help from a lot of resources online and that is when I also realized that you know after some time when I was at a position when I, I, I became an automation architect there and then I was at a position when I could actually understand things from the very basics because I have started from scratch and I could I, I knew what what it takes from you know very scratch and very basics. I thought that it would be great that now I can give something back and you know I can now teach others. There are a lot of people who need this kind of step by step teaching from scratch because I have seen in my team and I have seen you know in general there are a lot of people who want to start something but then there are very few uh, you know tutorials or guidance available that teaches them from the very basics starting from zero starting from scratch and going up step by step. So that is when I you know started uh, teaching and I, I just thought you know I'll uh, create a channel and it, it was not even you know I thought of creating a YouTube channel. I just wanted to create some uh, videos that uh, on the topics I was currently working on so that it can help others and I just recorded my sessions on my same laptop that I was using for my work and the uh, the headphones that I was using. Uh, I, I did not you know invest anything like you know buying stuff or anything. I just recorded my sessions and posted them on YouTube and very soon it became popular. Uh, people liked the step by step way of teaching and you know that is how I started YouTube.
where uh, a lot of lot of interesting things and i really like the part where you know how you gradually built up something that you said very early uh, you know when you took the plunge and you wanted to get into understand the frameworks you mentioned uh, okay let's see what's the most will happen i will fail at the most but that yeah. that attitude on on that attitude i have a particular question uh, so so when 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 the when people start learning automation do you see that fear of failure may be an impediment uh, or a challenge uh, in terms of, for 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 learning not just automation for learning anything else in life do you think that is an important factor uh yes brijesh and i think you know in any aspect of life if you see uh the fear of failure is something that you know keeps a lot of people from trying anything new and this is this is one thing that can make a lot of difference to you know whatever you can become or whatever you can achieve so um if if you ask me you know that one thing that has helped me to reach wherever i am today and maybe uh, wherever i'll go in future i will say that this is this uh, you know um uh, attitude or a uh, uh, mindset that i have is that whenever a challenge come comes my way i just take it up and i just uh, tell myself that at most what will happen is i can fail and you know even that failure will give me some experience that can be helpful somewhere else exactly uh, so so i just want to you know say this to everyone who is watching this that never be afraid of taking up challenges and this is the most beautiful things that can happen with you if you take up challenges and if you you know try to do things take very small steps and try to uh, you know achieve whatever you can and whatever you do uh, it will make a lot of difference and you will see in future that this was the best decisions you could have taken absolutely and, and i think that is a very good message and i'm and i'm very glad that that it has come so early in our discussion uh you know your entire story and your entire attitude towards learning and then slowly building up step by step and then calling your channel also you know step step by step automation and and it it is so interesting it is so so inspiring as you know you want to learn say for example uh selenium okay out of all the topics uh, selenium being one of the most popular comes to our mind very easily anybody who is starting up their journey needs to have that attitude that you just mentioned that that you know what's the most that going to happen you will fail and a failure will be an experience will be a learning and then you start taking steps small steps you know because when we were babies when we started learning to walk we never started running first right we took the first step we fell we got up we took another step and then step by step we started walking until we started running and now we can do a lot of things uh, after that so thank you so much raga for that message now uh, moving moving ahead so you've been doing a lot of lot of these these uh, youtube uh, videos on various topics okay on on various topics i want to draw your attention to some of the trends that you are watching currently in the industry so what according to you will be the top 3 trends that you are watching currently and would would advise the testers to focus on okay so you know uh, with what i have observed and experienced uh, i believe um, the basic automation is going to stay when i say basic automation it is like automation of uh, applications it can be a web application a mobile application a desktop a database so uh, today uh, i have seen that there are a lot of organizations who need that and it can be a little bit surprising but i have also seen there are a lot of organizations who are yet to start on automation in a real sense or or a, you know uh, in a, a very uh, uh, kind of a proper way Uh, there there are uh, you know organizations who are still doing uh, testing in the traditional ways so the scope of doing automation the basic automation on uh, applications based application based automation that is automation on web mobile desktop database apis all this is going to stay so if you can 
um, teach yourself, train yourself, and get uh, and become an expert on doing automation on these applications using any tools which are available. Like Selenium is the uh, most widely used for web automation. Then you can say APM for mobile, and then similarly we have Postman, SOAP UI, and all these uh, for APIs. Then JMeter for performance. So if you can uh, become expert on these, this will be very uh, this will be awesome and you will always find uh, you you are into uh, you, your skills are relevant even after five or ten years. I believe so uh, then DevOps is definitely one uh, hot area and uh, there are a lot of DevOps jobs these days and then we need people who can actually work into an end to end DevOps process. So when you talk about DevOps, it is like you know in the complete life cycle of a product or a project you have different stages where you can actually automate and chain the things together and then have a complete process end to end even the feedback and monitoring process is included so if you can you know um, skill yourself and become experts in some of these devops processes that will be so good uh, then i see uh, if I talk about API testing or microservices, even that is uh, you know gaining a lot of traction these days. Uh, if if you talk about the testing pyramid, so we say that you know there's a testing pyramid. If you you know just search online, you will see that uh, it is it's it goes like you know like a pyramid, like a triangle, and at the bottom we have unit tests, and then we have you know uh, some automation, uh, some API tests, then automation test, and then finally we have some manual QA. So it is said that the maximum part of your testing if it can be covered with the uh, most stable and the most fast uh, and the fastest test test cases it is awesome so we have unit test which can we say that if it can cover most of your functionality it will be awesome then we have uh, api tests and automated api tests because they are very fast there is no gui involved so if you can cover your functionality using api test as much as you can that is awesome then we go to automation test what cannot be covered with unit test and api test can be covered with some automated gui test and finally a very small portion for a manual testing so that uh, the tests that are most brittle and take the most uh, the maximum amount of time should be the least and the tests which are most stable and take the least amount of time should be should cover the maximum functionality so whatever application you are working with you think about you know th this way of a testing pyramid and then you can see what skills you need to uh, have and other thing i just want to add here is today as well as in the future the time will be for the problem solvers so whatever is that you are working on just don't do for the sake of doing it. Just don't learn Selenium for the sake of learning it and just show, uh, you know, adding a skill in your resume that, okay, I can automate, uh, I can do automation testing of web applications using Selenium. See what are the real world challenges, you know, see an end to end process, see how you can actually uh, reduce the time of testing in the entire process and make it more stable. That is, if you have the problem solving attitude, you will always be in need. Absolutely, I, I think that is so well said, Raghav. Uh, a lot of people I see in my experience, uh, learning technology, learning tools, uh, you know, just because they want to have it on their resume, uh, yeah. they want to clear interviews. Okay, that's that's become more or less the goal of a lot of people, and and that puts me in a spot of bother. But you mentioned something really nice that. You know, as long as we have our attitude towards solving problems and and learn tools and technology with respect to that in mind, I think that adds a lot of value. Now I want to bring your attention back to something that you said about these trends. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned the testing pyramid, and the testing pyramid uh, focuses a lot on 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 uh, going ground up from unit testing. So. Do you think testers can contribute in unit testing? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, testers can and testers should. Although until now we say that unit testing is something that happens during the dev phase and the developers create the tests. But I believe it is always uh, you know, good to have a dif different perspective and have a fresh eyes to look into the tests. Uh, it, it is you know, our traditional uh, saying that if we have the same person who develops the code also test their code, they are always going to miss something. So it is always good to have a different perspective and fresh eyes on 
on the functionalities and the code. Uh, so I believe uh, testers and QAs can um, definitely help in unit testing and they can skill themselves for creating unit tests and then definitely this is going to be really really good uh, we always talk about shift left where you we, we say that most of the testing can be done as early as possible during the dev phase itself which is fine which is okay but then testers testers should have a role in that uh, unit testing or whatever earliest possible test cases or testing we can run so uh, with that in mind how do you deal with a situation where uh, you know in a lot of organizations testers are not involved early in the product life cycle they, they they are brought in pretty late they do not get the requirements directly uh, they get a more like a developer's version of the requirements uh, how do you deal with that kind of a situation no i i believe that uh, every organization has you know um, their own processes but i believe that if the testing team and the QA team can be involved as early as possible in the life cycle, it is going to help. It is going to help a lot. Today we talk about BDD, which is behavior driven development and the whole concept of BDD and the whole process of BDD revolves around this uh, you know, idea that all the teams should collaborate, whether they are business teams or technical teams. And uh, the process of BDD starts with that. As soon as we have a user story, the product owner sits with a developer or a, and a QA or sits with the representatives of dev team and QA team and they together decide on the user story. They look at the examples, uh, they collaborate, they create some scenarios and finally the outcome of that meeting is that they have some uh, agreed examples and scenarios which then develops into documented examples in Gherkin language or you know whatever BDD tool we are using and the, that becomes a source of truth for every team whether it is business teams, technical teams, dev, QA, everyone. The business teams use it for creating user stories, the dev team use it for coding, the QA team uses for testing and automation team uses for creating you know automation tests using tools like Cucumber. So that is why BDD process uh, that is the, even the whole crux or concept of BTD to collaborate and involve everyone. So I believe it will be great if QA teams and testers can be involved as early as possible in the life cycle. Uh, we will get a different perspective and uh, it is often said that you know the QA teams uh, know a lot about the product, the use cases, so they can always uh, you know contribute in a much better way if they are involved as early as possible. Uh, that's that, that's a very uh, wise thought from you, Raghav. Uh, going a little further on, on on this very thought. Now, as you mentioned, that you know the the, the, the most important thing to realize for organizations doing doing BDD is the fact that it is a more collaborative approach to include everybody right from the start and then you know build from the ground up. Now, a lot of organizations in the modern day have been thinking of BDD as an afterthought. Okay, and uh, for example, they are doing their, their you know, they, they, are, they have their own process. They're already into building the product and then say, oh, those guys are doing BDD. Why shouldn't we also try? Okay, so something like that. Do you think that approach works or do you think People should start thinking if they are thinking of something like BDD, they should start thinking early. Uh, yeah, so you know, uh, this is a very good question, Rajesh, and uh, this is very true that today a lot of people do BDD just for the sake of doing it and because it is popular or others are doing. Uh, a lot of times we do not actually understand what exactly is BDD and the, what what is the exact process of BDD. So BDD is not, you know, just creating a feature file using keywords given when and then and automating using tools like Cucumber. It is much more than that. It is, uh, you know, automating using Cucumber or any BDD tool is just a part of it. But BDD starts from the from the point where a user story comes in or from even even a step earlier when a, a business owner or a product owner sends us a requirement or sends us an enhancement request. So 
the process starts with whenever a business owner or a product owner sends a request to the product owner or the business analyst that you know i need this change in the application or i need this new feature the business analyst or the product owner documents the requirement and can create some examples and user stories and the first thing he does uh, he he does is uh, he calls the dev team and the qa team and all these three teams all the all the representatives from these three teams sit together and this is called as discovery meeting which is the first phase of bdd so in this discovery meeting they discuss the examples and then uh, you know like a, a when a business analyst or a product owner is describing the example and the requirement the dev team or the representative from dev team can say okay if i have to code for this i may have to take care of this module and i may have to do connections with this other module the qa person can say okay if you are doing this you should be taking care of this condition as well and then the ba will say oh i did not thought about that let me put that into the requirement and let me put that into the user story so this is how the meeting goes on and the outcome of this meeting is the agreed examples and scenario which is been agreed by ba product owner dev and qa and then the second phase is formulation where these examples which are agreed by all these teams and all the representatives are then documented uh using some uh, gherkin tools like uh, the gherkin language with this scenario given when and then and these documented tool uh, these documented examples then become the source of truth for all the teams and then the next process starts where we take these feature files and do coding do automation and this is what most people think of what bdd is but there it starts much earlier so i will say that if you just want to do bdd for the sake of doing it don't do it it is a organizational process it is a, a process that starts much ahead and uh, the actual uh, you know the need of doing bdd is to do collaboration between teams and so that all the teams can collaborate in a better way and everyone has a single source of truth so uh, that is what it is and uh, bridges i have very recently started creating this entire tutorial on the basic bdd process so i believe some some videos are already out and there are some videos which are uh, which will be out in a in a week or so so i think uh, anyone who is having any doubts or confusion on what exactly bdd is or what exactly is the bdd process how bdd starts in an organization and want to see a actual workshop you should watch these videos well thank you raghav for for for, for announcing it because i was going to announce it anyways i have been following your uh, your videos very closely and and uh, that's how Uh, i i brought this question up because uh, I, i i was doing my homework on, on 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 you and your body of work and i came across this and i said this is a very important message that needs to go out and people need to realize this fact that you know not just pdd uh, anything that they try they should not try it because somebody else is doing it because it has worked for somebody else does it fit your context first of all okay if it does not then don't waste your time doing that try something which which will fit your context secondly do it the right way not just you know do it for the sake yeah, of doing the, for the sake of doing it don't do that yeah yeah and and and, and the same thing uh, applies with devops you know the 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 big beast which which we have right now called devops everybody wants to do it and and you know in studying uh, human behavior in studying uh, cognitive science a lot which i have been doing of late uh, uh, as as it is one of the areas of my interest uh, i have realized that we have we are no exception i mean we testers are no exceptions uh, when it comes to cognitive biases okay and and our biases lead to some of our choices in testing and what you just described is an example of bandwagon bias where where one somebody starts a trend and then everybody starts to sort of fall without thinking much about it and they say okay we will do it because it's popular it's nice and we can tell our customers or we can pop it and people will relate to it so don't do it don't get into that bandwagon of trying to do something because somebody else doing it that that's a great message uh, raghav now on similar lines with devops we hear a lot of people uh, 
uh, investing a lot on learning Kubernetes and and Docker and and things like that. How about learning the entire DevOps cycle and trying to understand where things fit in before you jump into learning any tools or technology? How about that? Yeah. So, uh, Bridges, I will say that uh, if you if you are learning something new and you know if you are learning to get knowledge and you know get wiser so that you can you know explore more things and get more educated it is always good you can always learn new things and then you know you can once you learn and you go uh, step by step you will see you can make connections and you can see how exactly you can use your learning so that is one aspect that if you are learning for increasing your knowledge and skills it is all fine but then if you really want to apply your knowledge and if you are learning to apply it in your project or in your process in your organization that definitely you should uh, have a context of what is happening now what do you want to change and how can you change it what are the tools or devops processes or tools that can actually help you you can see some examples you can see some studies so again you know going back to the early example don't do things for the sake of doing it uh, if you really want to implement DevOps or you want to implement some part of it or maybe some tools that are being used You see what is your current process and how can you actually? Uh, improve it or how you can actually make of you know other tools and DevOps processes so uh, It can be like you know if you if you are having a life cycle or a process in your organization where you have all these different uh, tasks or sections separated out like there is a dev uh, a dev phase where the developers will code for the application or do any enhancements and then there is a separate QA phase uh, And then there's a separate deployment phase. So if you can just you know automate these things and can uh, connect these things so that they there is a um, Automatic trigger once the dev checks in their code. There are some unit tests which get triggers when that is successful It triggers a deployment job that does deployment on a QA server then it it triggers some automation tests on the QA server if that is successful It sends out the report and then the deployment on the production starts if that is as you can do even that is a, a Good example of DevOps. So it is not like, you know, I have to learn kubernetes. I have to learn docker It is not like that. You see what is your process? Uh, what you can do to improve it and go at a very uh, you know at a start at a very small step so that is you know the message I just want to share with everyone on this. Well, uh, that's that that's really uh, indeed my recommendation as well. And and if you have noticed, Raghav from the very start has been in, insisting on on going slow, going to the basics, going step by step. And that is the reason why you should follow his. Uh, you should subscribe to his channel to learn things step by step. Uh, his channel features on the test chat channels uh, feature channel list i will include a link to his channel in the description of this video so if you guys are not yet subscribed to his channel please do so uh, because you know it has done wonders for me personally and uh, it is one of the most recommended things that that i do and raghav i need to tell you this that uh, just like we have uh, freshers in india in the netherlands we call them young professionals so one of the young professionals who joined our team recently uh, asked me about Selenium, and he he and and he said, okay, so I'm trying to learn Selenium because I know that I want to build my career in testing. And uh, so, what do you think about it? And I said, yeah, that's a good good thought that you have. You you already have that acumen towards learning Selenium. And I asked him, what has been your source of learning? And he first told me that the first thing that I did was a Udemy course by somebody called Raghav Pal. And I was so thrilled. And I told him, yes, I, I know that's a good point to start. And then I said, okay, what 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 next? Then he mentioned that he started following your your YouTube channel. And then he mentioned on similar lines the channel of, of Mukesh and Naveen. And I said, You you are definitely going in the right direction because because you are using the, the resources which I would have anyways recommended to you. So so I wanted to tell you this that uh, that that you know the, what you are doing through your channel is trying to help uh, young minds who are going towards testing uh, 
get in the right direction. So thank you very much for 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 all that you're doing, uh, and and please continue doing uh, these things and keep inspiring people. Now, having said that, I want to ask something really fun right now. Uh, so there was uh, what was the story behind the Mickey Mouse stories that that you started uh, building up? What what was the story behind that? Uh, okay, so you know, uh, uh, this is a uh, the Mickey and Minnie series where I yeah. I create stories. It's on my on my website, automation step by step. There is a section for stories. So uh, it it was just you know I and it was it was very recently during this you know lockdown situation um, the 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 pandemic situation in the lockdown. I I was sitting and uh, you know I was just thinking something I did not had much to do that day so I was you know uh, kind of enjoying my leisure time and I was I was just you know thinking on uh, how better can I help people who are completely new and by new I do not say that these are freshers they can be people who are experienced but they can be completely new to a topic or to some particular uh, you know aspect or to some particular terminology. And I was just thinking that what is the best way? I am already doing these step-by-step -step tutorials and videos, which is helping a lot of people. But then, uh, what what more can I do, and what more can I contribute so that you know people can actually uh, understand the things in a very interesting way, and in a in a kind of way that is not actually boring. Because sometimes you know the technical stuff can get boring, even if you can. If, if you do it, you know, in the best way possible. So I, I just you know thought that, you know, storytelling has been and I think will be the best modes of imparting education. Like, you know, I, I have a daughter who is four years old and one of the best ways I can teach her anything is through stories. So I, I just thought about that. And I, I thought, you know, if, if I can, you know, convert this education or imparting education into kind of a storytelling, it can be great. And I think I remember some time back I had read something similar, which was some concept was being, uh, you know, um, told in a in a way of a story between uh, like a conversation between two people, and it was a very great way of uh, you know imparting knowledge and um, yes, yes. Uh, actually making other person understand what exactly that that terminology or a topic means. So I, I so I just thought of that, and then you know. Uh, Mickey and Minnie are you know the universal characters that everybody can relate to so I just thought of that and I took my notepad and I started creating and, and I think the first thing was maybe on machine learning or artificial intelligence I, I don't even remember uh, yeah. if I, yeah. yeah so so uh, uh, I just thought you know I'll, I'll create a conversation between Mickey and Minnie where uh, you know Mickey or Minnie one of them ask a question to the other person and then he says, okay, I will explain you about a story and then we have analogies like in artificial intelligence and machine learning. We took an analogy of a library and then vehicles and you know all these other things. So it, it becomes so exciting, interesting and then the other person can just understand it in a very uh, in, a, in a great way. The other thing is that uh, with these analogies and stories, people can actually retain their knowledge and understanding and they can remember and recall things very easily. So that was the whole concept and then I, I, I published few stories. People liked it a lot and then I continued with the rest of them. I still have a lot of stories to do. I think last month I could not take out a lot of time because you know these uh, creating a plot, creating a concept and then the topic and research and it takes a lot of time. Even for a single story, it takes a lot of time to create the complete thing. So uh that is what i'm i'm you know trying to do with the mickey and mini stories well that's that, that's wonderful to hear and and, and, and i uh, you said a lot of people liked it i am one of those lot of people who just loved it okay you're mm -hmm. you're, you're you're telling a story and through through uh, our favorite characters mickey and mini for a long time they have been um, you know even now i like watching uh, you know disney series cartoons on tv uh, that's a very relaxing yeah. thing that that happens you know tom and jerry of course uh, uh, take take the cake away because they are probably in my opinion uh, the best so far i know others may have different opinions but 
<laughs> but I think Tom and Jerry are on top for me, and then you know the entire Disney character range, where you talk about Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Pluto, and and those guys, those bunch, and probably somewhere down the line, yeah, okay, Harry Potter, he, he gets a few points <laughs> as well. But 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 those are my favorites. Now coming yeah, to so Tom and Jerry. Uh, Tom and Jerry has been my favorite too. You know, during childhood, and even today, sometimes I watch them. uh I, i actually thought of having a conversation between tom and jerry but i then i thought maybe a little bit awkward you know because they are they are like enemies all the time so i thought mickey yeah, and minnie will be a uh, be one idea for you maybe developers and testers who who who, ca- who cannot live without each other but have to and there is always this tussle going on uh, that can be a good idea for maybe for telling stories in future for you <laughs> So you yeah, might want you know, to- I, I I always believe that you know Dev and QA are a single team. <laughs> so, but uh, I I know there there can be some differences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now that brings me to the most interesting segment of of, of this interview uh, called rapid fire. So I'm going to give you so I'm going to ask you five questions with two choices. Uh, you have to pick a choice and in a single sentence tell me why do you like that choice. Okay. So starting now first question for you unit testing or api testing api testing for me why uh i would just say that you know i'm i'm more exposed to api testing than unit testing so that's the only reason otherwise you know i, I don't have anything against unit testing that is very important but just for me okay uh agile or waterfall agile i will say so you know i i think uh, agile is a more collaborative approach and you know a more structured way so agile any time okay uh, all right so then moving on to the next question uh, this is this is a slightly different one i think we just discussed but mickey mouse or harry potter yeah for me mickey mouse i'm i have not you know i'll seen a lot of harry potter so mickey mouse <laughs> okay now this this is this is i think an easy one for you spending time okay. with your daughter or making youtube videos i think as as of now i will say uh, although it is very difficult to choose but as of this time i'll say spending time with my daughter because th- that is that is a great time i i have because she's 4 years old and you know i can actually relive my childhood with her so definitely that will uh, will take a little higher preference but yeah it's it's a difficult choice <laughs> okay the final one rajma chawal or masala dosa i i would say rajma chawal uh, i i had a lot of masala dosas i i have been in south india for a long time So now I think rajma chawal is something I will opt over masala dosa. <laughs> that, that, that's 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 an interesting choice, and that's uh, probably in this point in time that would be my choice too, because uh, yeah. I, I'm I, I'm uh, married to somebody from South India, so dosas are 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 pretty common. So yeah, a okay. little bit of rajma chawal. <laughs> yeah. I am too. Well, thank thank you so much, Raga, for the. those wonderful answers now there is uh, one final thing that uh, or rather two final things that i want to know so one is is uh, a lot of videos that you've done there has been a guitar in the background what's the story of that guitar yeah yeah there is a guitar that you can see on the background so you know uh, it's probably it was long back but it's it's is i think next to the tripod yes there it is in, in its yeah, spot it is, what's the story it is it is there yeah so uh, you know uh, the, the journey or the or the story is just that you know i always wanted to learn guitar and i actually started on it i i learned some basic guitar some basic chords and notes uh but unfortunately i could not continue with it and even now it is not like i am doing it regularly so it it is placed there it is there every time in my room but not very you know regularly you know playing it or learning it Uh, uh, this is w- w- one of the things on my to do list that you know i i want to learn guitar again i i have i know some basic chords and basic notes but yeah uh, you know whenever i can i will you know restart on that journey so 
that that's all about the story of guitar well in, in speaking to uh, you know a lot of people who have expressed their interests uh, uh, Naveen, of course, he he said that you know he likes to sing. So of course, we have a singer already, and in you we have a guitarist. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think I think uh, our dream of forming a testers band is not not far <laughs> when we all come together and, and yeah. perform some music shows. Yeah, man. Okay. <laughs> maybe if if we, if we create a band, then it may give me a trigger to you know start learning and completing the process of learning guitar but you know as of now it is kind of uh, there is a break on that so yeah. then i i need to start thinking about it seriously <laughs> yeah definitely oh, okay. okay last question for you before i before i let you go i know that we are we are running on a very tight schedule so i don't want to hold you up for long i think we we still have a few minutes but but the last question for you uh, when raghav is not having fun doing all these youtube videos and learning and teaching automation uh, or different aspects of testing or giving them advice when raghav is not having fun doing all this what does he like to do uh i believe um, you know i i as of now as of this time most of my time goes with my daughter so you know i play with her and one of the things i really enjoy is taking her to different places so you know i she 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 also likes it a lot so i'm i'm very fond of traveling and you know i have found this uh new interest of taking my daughter along to different places uh, nearby places of course this is a lockdown situation so we cannot travel uh, you know to far places but whatever i can you know show her nearby places maybe some parks temples or churches or maybe some other places whatever 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 i can i try to do that so I, I i really like traveling and that is what i do whenever i'm not on my laptop <laughs> well that triggered me to one one more question so you've been answering a lot of questions for the rest of the world which is an incredible job how do you handle your your daughter's questions my my daughter's questions they must be very tough right yeah so you know i i just uh, you know I, as i told you that storytelling is one of the ways of teaching her so that is one thing i try uh, then you know today we we are living in a world of technology where whatever question she has i can actually show her a youtube video or maybe some picture so that uh, so uh, you know that is why how i use technology a lot so just few days ago you know she uh, she came from outside and i told her to wash the hands and she was you know just not washing the hands and she said you know i i, I don't want to do it why should we wash the hands it is all you know see it is already clean you can see it she she is like you know uh, kind of can be very adamant that time so i actually uh, show uh, i i switched on a youtube video which was a youtube video for kids it, it was showing how germs can enter the body and how, you know how germs are invisible i showed her that you know 10 minutes clip and then she could wash the hands so you know i i, I try all these different things <laughs> that's that that's quite interesting thank you so much uh, raghav for your time one final request for you uh, is uh, share your 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 picture for the thumbnail for this video uh, for the for the audience uh, i will have raghav's channel uh, on my uh, on the description of this video and uh, i it is already there in the that chat uh, feature channel list so if you happen to go there please do subscribe to his channel because there is a ton of resources there and uh, you know i will give links to raghav's uh, linkedin profile and other details as well so that those who can those who need to connect to raghav and feel the need to, or feel that he can help you definitely as you have seen he is a wonderful person to talk to always ready to answer questions uh thank you once again raghav for your time uh i i i am looking forward to continue to learn from you and uh, to build on my knowledge and i am sure everybody else will also be thank you so much for your time raghav thank you brijesh and it was you know really nice talking to you and uh, you know i i'm so grateful that you know uh, we could meet online and have this chat so uh thanks a lot for your time too and have a good day yeah thank you so much raghav bye bye
Bye.